I'm Allison Van Hooser, and I'm on a sold-out mission to develop highly successful leaders at all levels. In the 15 years I've been working throughout the food, financial, retail industries, and politics, I've become deeply aware of the powerful effects of leadership. In each episode, you will get strategies and actions you can use immediately in order to change you, your team, and your business. The question is, will you choose to own it? Will you put your stake in the ground and decide to do something with what you've learned today? This is Stake, the Leadership Podcast. There are very few times where I get to sit down with a woman my age that I have so much respect for both personally and professionally, but today is one of those days. I could not be more excited to have Michelle White on the podcast today. Michelle is an author and corporate director of training for First Southern Bancor. Michelle, tell everyone about your professional background and about your new book. Well, thank you so much for that very kind introduction. I am a corporate director of training for First Southern Bancor, but a former educator who had a a large career change sort of uh, at a time of life when I thought I was settled. And so when um, it came time to sort of think through Uh, This book, uh, it's called Buckle Up Buttercup, and it's how to drive success by embracing the power of change. And I really just ultimately wanted to share some of the funnies and the lessons I've learned along the way and some things that I've um, experienced and and gotten to see firsthand um, in what I do now and really just share that with the world. So thank you for having me, and I appreciate you so much. You're welcome. One of the things you started off saying was that you made a change in your career. And I think the thing that is incredible about you is how you went about that change. Talk a little bit about what you were doing, what were some challenges about the change, and how you navigated into what you do today. So I think everyone can sort of relate to maybe being in a job or in a a seat or a role that you just really, really don't like. Mm -hmm. Um, You might even say you hate your job. I uh, formerly was a a teacher. I taught um, elementary school for six years and um, I had come out of high school just very eager, um, worked through college, worked very hard and just knew that's what I wanted to do and went full speed ahead and you know, six years in was just absolutely miserable. Had children, didn't really felt like I, I could make a move, but just knew in my heart that I was not happy. And so I ultimately decided to, to leave that career and that role. And I spent um, some time at home sort of figuring out what I wanted to mm-hmm. do and really went back to, um, instead of back to a career or seeking a career, I really wanted to go back to a place that I had worked previously, which is First Southern. And I really wanted to go back to a place that I knew had very similar values. And ultimately, I think we can all wear many different hats and we can do many things, but being somewhere that aligns with your personal values and who you are makes a huge difference and so uh, I made that leap um, in my uh, late 20s uh, early 30s made that leap and it was very scary Mm -hmm. and I had a lot of people reach out though which was a beautiful thing Um, it is scary in a small town to make a change or to do something a lot of people thought I was crazy a lot of people said you know what what are you going to do you know all that school gone to waste and um, the beautiful thing was nothing was for waste and, and it all it all worked out great and you know everything is a lesson learned and public education wasn't a fit for me per se but all of uh, the muscles that I've flexed and built over the years in, in training others and educating it, I'm still educating it's a completely different setting completely different world but it wasn't time wasted. My education was not wasted. Education in any form is never wasted. Um, and experience is never wasted because no matter what you're doing, what your role is, the things that you face, the experiences that you go through uh, only help you in any context. They never hurt. So nothing is ever wasted. I absolutely agree. I had a lot of people, though, reach out. It sort of opens the door when you when you sort of step out and take a leap of faith or do something a little brave. Um, it kind of gives other people permission to to do the same. And I had a lot of people ask me, you know, well, 
you know, how did you get to a place of, of doing that and and how did you make that leap? And I really thought this is a great opportunity to share that story. And when I really sort of thought about everything, all of it hinged on change, Mm -hmm. Um, either needing a change or having gone through um, a change in work or what I desired as a person and and being able to navigate that and even leverage it in some cases um, for the better. So really, Buckle Up Buttercup is really about just how to, because not everyone can just jump ship. Right. You, not everybody can leave. And so how then, if you are wanting to make a change for yourself or if you are facing a change that you did not ask for, how can you leverage it and make it work to your advantage? And how can you learn and grow through it and also help others through it? Cause ultimately, I think that's what we're called to do is share and help and serve others. Absolutely. Talk a little bit about how you see change from the perspective of is it a constant thing in life or is it something you're just going to have to deal with maybe in a few different stages? It's both. It is It is a constant. It is unavoidable. It, there's There will always be change. That's the one thing that will never change. Thinking back, especially, you know, college and, and those very formative years, you don't know what you want to do. You have an idea, you think, but because you have not experienced it in its entirety, you're looking at it from the perspective of, you know, it's the it's the bright, shiny object and not when you're in the weeds with it, what it's like. So for me, when I, when I got to the point of, wow, so I think years one through three when I was teaching, it, I knew it felt off and, and I wasn't enjoying it. But I thought, okay, well, it's just because it's new and it's early, and I'm I don't I'm not tenured yet, so maybe it's nerves. Yeah. Um, and then after I, I hit that point of having tenure and and I had some years under my belt, and um, I was like, no, that's not it. You know, mm-hmm. maybe I just need to get to this point. And really, when I hit year six, I realized it's not it's none of the above. This is just mm-hmm. not a good fit for me. Um, it is for a lot of a lot of folks, and we have amazing teachers, and we're right. so blessed. But for me, it wasn't a good fit. So at that point, I kind of wanted to backwards map my life a little bit and really think, how can I go from thinking something was absolutely what I wanted to do to it being something I, I dreaded getting up in the morning and doing? And Let me just pause for just yeah. a second and say, it's really important that you all focus on what she just said mapping backwards to figure out where to go forward dig into that a little bit for the people listening if they're at a point where they either need to make a change or are having to change for some reason when you talk about okay let's look back to figure out how to go forward what does that process look like well for me um it was really so going as far back as i could to really think about what what even put me on the path towards teaching and ultimately i landed on in high school you know, you, you're, you're studying, you're, you're working hard, or in my case, hard-ish. <laughs> um, but you, you're, you get to senior year, and it's like you have to pick something because we have to start college with a major. You have to go on a track. You have to know what you're doing. And I distinctly remember feeling like as a, as a female in a small town, I had two choices. It was nursing or it was teaching. And teaching seemed like the better fit for me at the time. So I went full steam ahead in that direction. And I never paused to really, I didn't know anything about it, truthfully. Um, I saw teachers. I had what I thought was a glimpse into their life, which shout out to teachers because what they do is incredible and Mm -hmm. difficult and in the weeds every day. And so you never on the surface realize what they're dealing with um, until until you're doing it. And so for me, it was going back to what made me choose that to begin with, what and what choices then as I was going along, where was I ignoring my gut? Where was I not, you know, certain things you just, you don't want to believe for yourself. Mm -hmm. And so where was I ignoring my gut? Where was I not staying true to my own self and my own values? And how can I avoid doing that again? That's so powerful. Tell me what you think, but I think it's easy for us as women to follow the path that other people put pressure on us to follow. One of my favorite things about you is 
you have this fire in your belly. And I told you, like, I knew Michelle in high school, um, but I've really gotten to know her as an adult. And I love the way you stand up for yourself, the way um, you drive forward with what it is you think needs to be accomplished. So is there anything you'd like to share in the way of handling other people's expectations of you or perceptions of what you should do, should be, how you should act, how you should navigate change? Absolutely. So for me, um, I did for a very long time. I, and I it's still in certain things and to some degree, you know, you worry very much about how you're perceived, what mm-hmm. other people think, what they will think if I make this decision. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when I left a career and stayed home, it was very much, you know, oh, people will think I'm lazy or they will think, uh, you know, my poor husband, what, <laughs> you know, what am I doing to him? And, um, and you do, and, and people vocalize those things to you. And certainly, um, it, without realizing it, we all place expectation on each other. But for mm-hmm. myself, taking time, taking that break in my career to really um, learn about what I valued specifically, um, what, and not just valued in a career, but valued personally, Mm -hmm. because I believe more so than a a title or a a salary bracket or anything. If something I'm doing doesn't align with my personal values, my integrity at my core, I cannot do it no matter what the, the pay or the, what, how glittery it may appear. Right. So, um, for me, just taking the time to understand that for myself and to get to know um, organizations and people that, that did align with that so that that was right from the get-go. And I'm so fortunate that, you know, the organization I work for now just have, you know, they really they have a strong set of values and they live it out. And it's um, that for me was the biggest piece in, in facing change you know, gosh, if you want to, if you want to enact a change for yourself, if you want to make a leap, um, doing it from a place of, of knowing what is important to you at your core and staying true in the moment of choice, um, Mm. to that, not to what someone else expects, not to what, um, others want for you. Uh, you know, people hate it. They're like, oh, your whole, you went to all that school, and I said, that's okay. My, this place <laughs> takes it now, too. You know? There you <laughs> go, yes. Um, but just being able to, and, and not to take that to heart, and to right. really um, not be a sponge to that expectation, but to sort of just reflect it back to folks and, and to know that you're doing um, all you can and, and doing what's right for you. And then if it's a change that you're facing, which is all the time in the workplace, right? Someone, someone, uh, the powers that be may change a policy, a process, and it really can booger things up on your end and you can, you know, face a lot of challenges because of it. Um, In in the book, I talk a lot about being of a mindset where if it's a change that really conflicts with your inner set of values, your personal integrity, then dig your heels in, you know, mm-hmm. speak, speak up, speak your voice. But if it's just something that's really just an annoyance, how can you flip your mindset, change your perspective and leverage it to set yourself apart from everybody else that's fussing, everybody else that's complaining? How can you then leverage it, you know, and help become an agent for change? And, and really uh, when it comes to growth and, you know, accelerating in the workplace, being that person in times of difficulty can really um, help you stand out. Absolutely. You all don't know Michelle personally. So Michelle is a very confident, courageous woman. And I think that that stems from knowing who you are. So when that change comes, for most people our age, if we were to go ask them, if we were to ask the people listening to this podcast, they have not sat down and said, okay, this is who I am. This is what I stand for. This is what I want. But when you talk about that mapping backwards and figuring that out, that, once you do that, is where your confidence is going to come from. That's what's going to give you the courage and the wherewithal and the stamina to move through that change. I want to sort of reiterate what you said. If you're the person who's standing out from everybody else and you're dealing with the change in a positive way, then you will be, number one, recognized as a leader, but number two, that's going to help you advance in your career. 
And so this is a leadership podcast. We're talking about how to get ahead, how to empower other people. And my goodness, I'm going to let you speak to this, but if you are the champion for change and you can get other people on board, you are going to be wildly successful as a leader. Can you talk a little bit about, you work for a bigger community bank. Can Mm -hmm. you talk about change from a leadership perspective and how the people underneath leaders, how they are viewing a leader when change comes in, how it looks from the top down when change is happening. How does it feel to the people at the bottom of the organizational chart when it's happening at the top, when the top's making decisions? Yeah, well, I think um, for myself, I'm I'm very privileged to get to, to be there and, and see how things, you know, trickle down and affect everyone and those folks on the front line that are really the heart and soul of any organization. Um, and that's been true where I'm at now and, and for places I've worked in the past. But it's very important for anyone in leadership to remember how um, things, how they do affect in ways that you you don't necessarily think of right off the bat. A lot of things that um, are process improvements that really need to happen to drive an organization forward to help with um, costs and things that it's, it is an improvement for a reason can feel like the opposite mm-hmm. to to those in the trenches and I think just clearly communicating um, how it will be an improvement and it may um, it may take some time and it may you know we may not see the fruits of that immediately but how you know if you'll hang in there with it how it will make it better at this point because Typically, and in my experience, no one enacts a, a huge change because they think it's going to be a bad idea. Right. No yes, one wants point. to, you know, no one wants to throw out a rotten tomato. And but where it falters is there was no buy-in. People weren't aware of, of that it was coming, mm-hmm. and people didn't have time to see the heart of the leaders and the reason for it. And most of the time, you know, if they know that and they know that the heart's in the right place and, and this is this is the goal, then you're going to have more buy-in and, and that always helps with any, you know, change as far as at the organizational level. Absolutely. Michelle, what would you say to people who are listening to this podcast who lead teams of any size? What value does this book bring to them? Really, when I, when I wanted to share this, it's both professional and very personal because professional changes impact on a personal level. Um, everyone always wants to talk about work-life balance and really, you know, what ha- is happening in your life does affect work and what's happening at work does affect your life. Mm-hmm. And it boils down to um, mindset and what mindset you have going into any change and what you're willing to compromise on or not and things like that. So from a leadership perspective with this book, my vision and my goal was, you know, if you uh, were a leadership team and you know a a big change is coming and you want to help your teams, um, you want to increase buy-in, you want to help your teams be in the right mindset before it, before it hits. It's Mm -hmm. so much easier to lead people who are on board and who were prepared and communicated to. So my vision for Buckle Up Buttercup was really to give them a guide, a manual, something to help them navigate that change, to get their mind in the right place, and to recognize tendencies where we're being resistant for no reason. We may be resistant just because we've told ourselves we don't like change, Mm -hmm. or we have done it this way for 20 years, and why would I change it? And this book really, it's really set up. I, I really wanted something that you could use. You didn't have to read start to finish. You could pick up and wherever you were at, there was something for you to immediately use and immediately apply to your own life. So the chapters are set up sort of with with topics and themes. And at the end of each chapter, there's a challenge activity, a way for you to challenge and apply that directly to whatever you're facing and and just time for reflection. So I really wanted the book to be something that Uh, personal use or team use you could pick it up and whatever you're in the thick of you could immediately apply and and get cranking with what would you say to people who maybe don't want change but they're unhappy with where they are because 
the change you've had in your life, specifically in regards to what you discuss in this book, has been very positive. But some people mm-hmm. still say, uh, I don't know. When I hear you talk about Buckle Up Buttercup, I think, wow, this could be so powerful for those people saying, man, work just sucks right now, or life just yeah. sucks right now. Can you talk a little bit about how this book can be a tool to help them move forward? Yeah, I mean, I, we hear that all the time, is that I hate change, I don't like change. But what's funny is it's there whether you like it or not. Mm-hmm. It's coming whether you like it or not. Um, and and more often than not, if you are miserable, if you are unhappy, the only way to get happy is to change something. Mm-hmm. Something yes. has to change. It is truly the key to to all of that. And, and to say you don't like change or to be resisting it is really you're just hurting yourself. Um, but... More importantly, you know, the only way to get happy when you're unhappy is something has to change. Um, if, it, if it can't be uh, your career or whatever it is that is a perceived reason mm-hmm. you're unhappy, then it's got to be something else. It's got to be uh, your mindset. It's got to be another area. You have to look at what you can, what's within your circle of control and what's not within your circle of control. We can't control everything, um, but, uh, you know, it's the book Seven Habits talks about Mm -hmm. carrying your own weather and I very much think about that not everything can be changed everyone can't quit their job Mm -hmm. you know you you can't always change everything Mm -hmm. but there are certain things you can change and it may come down to your own perception of what it is that's so powerful I want to finish this up. It's always fun for me to get to know authors behind the scenes. So I would just want to ask you a couple questions. Can you talk a little bit about your writing process when it comes to this book? Have you written things before? What did you like to write before? What did you not like to write before? How did this all come to be? What were your feelings around it all? Yeah, so I love to read, love to write, have since I was a little girl. In fact, uh, one of the people that i kind of gave a little shout out to in my book was Christy Phelps she's principal of our high school now but when I was in seventh grade I wrote I wrote a piece and she was like you should be published and you know speaking of teachers and what they go through and what they do um they also make a huge impact and she Mm -hmm. she certainly had one on me and that I carried that with me but I love to write all kinds of things I never thought that um you know a business professional uh, book would be something that I would start with but I love to write and that's always something I've done uh, even just reflective and for personal growth but getting the words out alone is a big process but then sifting through those and making sure that you are really saying what you want to say and you know in the south we have a lot of fun sayings and phrases and so making sure that we're getting you're getting your own personality in there while also conveying a message yes it's a big deal so it's been a fun process is there anything in the book that may be surprising or exciting to people there was one thing you told me about that's going to be in the book that i think will be such a good surprise to people who love reading and different types of reading do you want to talk a little bit about what you're passionate about that you included in the book so I do I, and have since I was young, like to write poems and verse and things like that. And, and that's kind of how my, my mind works. Um, I will often come up for rhymes for little things. And that may still be the primary school teacher in me. But each chapter opens up with a little verse um, just to set the stage. And I don't think one should ever take themselves too seriously. So that was just a way for me to open everything up and keep it lighthearted and fun. But tie a pretty little bow on what what each chapter has. I I have no doubt that the readers of that book are going to enjoy that. Michelle, thank you so much for being on here today. Please tell everybody where they can go order or pre-order, depending on when you listen to this podcast, where they can get Buckle Up Buttercup. So Buckle Up Buttercup is available on Amazon, and you can also go to buckleupbuttercupthebook.com. Sounds great. Thank you so much for being on here. If you're an organization that deals with change which is probably everyone listening to this, I highly recommend that you get Buckle Up Buttercup for yourself, for your team, so that you all can start navigating change in a way that is going to push you all forward. If you have any questions or want to talk to Michelle about change you're facing, personally or professionally, you can find all of her contact information at buckleupbuttercupthebook.com. Thank you so much for having me.